Welcome back to another edition of a spiritual narcissist. I'd rather be fishing and I'd rather be blind and see this kid's vision. I can't believe I just watched Road to Perdition, Tom Hanks. You guys know what this video is about. The only fans I have are the two oscillating next to my bed. Cut to two twinks spinning around in circles. Many of us gay folk have had our vibration lowered when we came to this planet. It can feel difficult and oppressive to be yourself when we're met with so much disdain, anger, violence. Welcome to planet Earth. We hate you. I don't hate those people. The individuals that have that hatred in their heart, they have to figure out why they're experiencing that pain and work through it and transform it back into love. And when they emerge from that fear, I'm gonna sue the shit out of them. So obviously, pandemic's still rolling on. I've had a lot of changes in my life, uh, a change in my income, for starters. Uh, I no longer run an, an Airbnb racket in Los Angeles. And it's actually a good thing because I'm a firm believer that you should do work that is authentic to you, makes you feel good, and that also serves the greater good of everyone involved. You don't want to be doing a job that's hurting anyone in any way or hurting yourself or forcing you to assume an identity that just does not work with who you actually are. I find that to be extremely detrimental to the soul. Many people, myself included, have tussled with that concept when you're under financial stress. It's easy to just grab whatever job or stay complacent in a job that's paying your bills, but you know it's not actually representative of your highest self. So the story of my Airbnb house, me and three friends moved in there a few years back. One of the kids had to move out and go back to Boston to finish school. He threw his bedroom up on Airbnb to cover his portion of the rent and we saw how lucrative it was. We were like, whoa, like, there's definitely something here. We definitely have an asset we can monetize. So we essentially transformed the house into a, a four bedroom hotel. The other kid moved out. I actually moved into the other guy's room with him so we could rent out the three other bedrooms and just maximize all the profits. Some people find the idea of like sharing a bed with a friend weird, but I really love the idea of making as much money as possible. So I just tell those people, did we share a bed? Yes. Are we gay? No. Well, well, I am. Look, we only did this so we could run a bed and breakfast together. Completely heterosexual behavior. So it took off, made a ton of money, and really uh, became quite the mogul in the Airbnb world. And at this point, I'll Airbnb anything. Go to my mom's house, she's in the bathroom a little too long, maybe she's constipated. I'm throwing a room up on the site. I can't be trusted, don't invite me over. Send me to jail now, I'll Airbnb my cell. Once the pandemic hit, obviously, tourism industry shit the bed and the quality of guests that I were getting really started to plummet and it became a task, a very unenjoyable job for me, a, a job that originally was fun, easy, and uh, made me a lot of money. It turned into basically a nightmare. I had some guests back in March when I showed up, they were literally cooking crystal meth inside my kitchen. I was like, we got a big problem on our hands. I need to figure out my percentage of this. He's like, dude, I told you I was methy. I was like, I thought you had a lisp. He's like, honestly, bro, I got a ton of meth here. Like, do you want some? I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Long story short, that was the first time I tried meth. Now I was like, get the hell out. This is ridiculous. Stop using my Pyrex. Like I use that to make cookies. Like, come on, dude. Also, I'd like to share a story with you guys about the homeless issue in Hollywood that I had to deal with and that really made me in a lot of ways into the person I am today. So I came back to the house one night after picking up my Indian food and I see a homeless woman wandering through my backyard pillaging under my deck and essentially stealing all my stuff. I don't want to fight a female, but also I'm not gonna stand by and get robbed. So I called 911 and they picked up and they said, can you please hold? And I said, um, doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of an emergency line? I knew at that point I had to take matters into my own hands. So I put down my chicken tikka and go up to stop her before she walks away with all of my stuff. She's got a bunch of props from my web series some pillows, an afghan, just a bunch of random items. I didn't want to touch this person, so looks like we're having a good old-fashioned tug-of-war. We're both in the middle of the street, 
pulling on this blanket. I'm getting the better of her. She's got that forearm strength. She's taking me for a ride. The rug burn's starting to set in. Finally, I use all my momentum and swing her with the blanket into the side of a car. Backpack falls off her. I recover my items. She stands up, looks me dead in the eye, and we just start going at it. Tongues in throats, hands all over each other, passionate groping on the street. And honestly, like, I wanna introduce you to her. She's here today. This is the girlfriend tag video. I was telling a more mask version of that story to a Marie and he's like, bro, I love the fact that you protect your house. I love that shit. It's like, well, I didn't mention it was a woman, but Semper Fi. I'm not proud of that tale, but in a lot of ways, it was kind of like a twink superhero origin story. And I'm living for it, hunty. I feel like I'm seeing more justice in the world today and it's inspiring. I got pulled over the other day for being on my phone and the officer didn't even give me a ticket. He's like, Steven D'Amico, top, bottom. I was like, I'm not sure what this has to do with the moving violation. I feel like sometimes I come off as an asshole. Gay guys meet me and they're like, that guy's a jerk. And someone's like, you know he's gay, right? It's like, oh, he's actually kind of cute. For a while, I wanted to have some kind of semblance of a traditional romance with someone I've met organically and had history with. There's just more of a spark there. I feel like when you can meet someone in real life and your paths kind of converge in a very romantic way. You know, it never was quite right dating that NRA guy, but I will admit it was comforting falling asleep in his arms. You wanna know what really gets me off? It's being intimate with someone who had at least one mildly intellectual conversation with before. Over time, the frustrations kick in, your standards start to drop. You start overlooking important traits like intelligence for a pretty face. I used to think the idea of hooking up with a guy who needed help getting his pants off was such a turn on. This barbaric third to the right on the evolutionary chart meathead. The dirty talks at the fifth grade reading level. You know, when I said I was looking for my boo, I meant Boo Radley. And I'll do it right there on the porch, scout's honor. But I've dated smart guys too, and that also comes with its fair share of issues. This one kid constantly flexing his intelligence. It's like dating Trivial Pursuit. We get it, you're good at Jeopardy. I finally told him, I was like, wow, you're like a sponge. He's like, why, because I absorb so much? I was like, no, because I'm gonna toss you out at the end of the week. I'm a romantic, what can I say? I'm trying to accept the people that come into my life the way they are and for the purpose they are there for and not try to force a relationship with them. I'm willing to accept the connection we have as friends and I'll foster that relationship to serve the greatest good of both parties involved until they get a boyfriend, at which point I'll block their number and never talk to them ever again. What I'm trying to say is we need to fundamentally shift the way we look at reality it's not a world that's outside of us. It's all a mirror within consciousness. The behavior of our pets is one way to gauge where we are vibrationally. I believe that pets are always reflecting the behavioral patterns of the owner. So when I was living with my friends, I had a cat that was constantly attacking my friend's cat and it just got so annoying and obstructive. And I finally just took a step back and realized, wow, I have no idea how to raise a cat. So the earth is undergoing a transformation. It's going into the fourth density. It's ascending to a more quasi-physical space. To get there, we need to get our energy up to 44,000 cycles per second. So let's put those fleshlights on vibrate. I had doubts about all these concepts originally, but I've had so many firsthand crazy manifestations in the physical world that it's all the evidence I need now to know that these ideas are true. I'll give you some examples. A few years back, I was delivering pizzas. I'm in my car. The actor Will Arnett just pops into my head. I was like, huh, wonder what that guy's up to. Drive to a hotel in Beverly Hills, walk into the lobby. Who's the first person I see? Steve Carell. No, Will Arnett. I was like, wow, this is really underwhelming. A few years later, I'm making love with this kid. I shouldn't say kid, he's like 14. I'm making love with this man, and afterwards, I could see a white light radiating off of his body. I've never been able to see anything like this before. Turns out, uranium poisoning. No, I could actually see this guy's aura. I was able to enter a higher space through our opening of our chakras and I could actually see light that normally wouldn't be visible to the human eye. When I was in college back in Boston, I remember smoking a blunt one winter with a bunch of friends. I took a few hits and then I had to sit down because I could literally feel my soul leaving my body going off of the ground and I could hear nature unfolding in my ears as if trees were sprouting out of my body. 
I didn't snap out of it for about 10 minutes until one of the kids is like, are you all right? And then I explained to him what's going on. He was like, dude, that was a black and mild. The point is we are multi-dimensional beings at heart and these higher states can be accessed at any time. It's all about transforming energy into more and more excitement. Anytime we're doing what we love to do, whether it's writing, singing, dancing, playing, exercising, meditating, we're operating on that higher frequency and we're in our most powerful form as creators. So whatever that activity is, just keep doing it. For me, it's ending videos abruptly.